All right, now I'd like to preach on the word listening. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. He just opened up the biggest can of canhood in the history of all canneries worldwide. We are not listening in silence for God the Father. We are blabbing our heads off. Oh boy. I personally believe, folks, that listening is the number one love language. Remember that book, The Five Love Languages? And some people are quoting the six love languages now, and everyone's into this conversation. Um, but I personally believe that the greatest love language is listening. Because words are king, and God is talking. And God wants to talk to every one of us personally in, in silence, in our prayer closet. Okay? And uh, so listen points to Father, the word. It equals the word silence using the same letters. And S-T-E-N on the end of listen equals Father. It's a very famous set of letters, the ending of the word elements and a host of others. Father gets the last word perfectly on the word listen. Okay? And then you can add other endings like listeneth, listening, listened, and all this stuff. But, but uh, Father's all over this one. Um, so first and foremost, who should you be listening to? Well, you should be listening to the Father. The Father is the one who speaks to you in your prayer closet when no one else is around and you're guaranteed perfect silence. Um, that's the most precious place in the world. Okay, that's why we call churches sanctuaries. They are supposed to be places of prayer. Jesus said, my house will be a house of prayer. Listening is far more important in prayer than us speaking. The Bible says that. Solomon talked to us about that. He says, when you draw near to the house of God, far better to keep your mouth shut than to, than to blab. Because God is in heaven and you on earth, therefore let your words be few. God says that for our pleasure. You know, it is infinitely pleasurable for us to listen in silence for the voice of God. And it is pleasurable, obviously, to God to speak to us personally in silence. Okay. Um, and so the word listen, first and foremost, mathematically points to Father. So that is the person whose voice you are to seek and who you are to wait on. Uh, other words that point to Father are the, the phrase wait on. We say wait on the Lord, okay? And I did a host of others one day where I was scooping up a ton of words, um, you know, to attend to the voice of someone. You, you are attending, you are waiting for them to speak. There's this concept of patience, this concept of, of sitting still for a long time, like a servant in a household just stands silent, waiting for the voice of his master. So there's a host of words that, that parallel Father perfectly, like to wait on, to attend, okay? And I encourage you uh, to scoop up the rest. Um, but listen, oh boy, oh boy. Um, this has been the most pleasurable practice in my personal life, it is lying silent on my bed comfortably Oh my gosh, I wasn't even fudge. All right, so now I'd like to preach on the word listen. There, uh, see that? I have too much impatience. What has happened to me? Oh man. I can't believe I wasn't recording. I, that was such good verbiage. You're like, man. Boy. Well, if it's starting to make you angry, maybe I'll just... Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe I'll just do it one more time. All right, folks, now I'd like to preach on the word listen. Now, truth be told, I was preaching awesomely on this and then just realized that I wasn't recording. And that was after like a full 10 minutes of sublime preaching. So I'm a little bit frustrated with myself, but we'll try again. So listen points to Father perfectly. It ends in Father perfectly. Uh, it parallels other phrases like wait on, to wait on the Lord or to attend uh, to the voice of the Lord. There's nothing more important than listening to God. 
and listening for his voice in silence. It's the most pleasurable activity there is. Remember, God saves the best for last. And when you're lying on your deathbed and you're old, this is probably the only thing you might be able to do, is simply lie there in comfort, listening in silence for the voice of the Heavenly Father. And because God saves the best for last, we know that it's therefore the most pleasurable activity there is for a person to do. So um, it's a must do for all people of all ages at all times. Um, uh, listen in silence in t intentionally for the voice of the Father. Expect him to speak to you. Expect his personal word to come to you. God knows your intention. He knows your will. He knows what you're trying to do. You, you are lying there in silence, not uh, in unbelief that God doesn't exist. You are lying there in silence, in fullness of faith, that your Father uh, is going to say things to you and that you're both going to enjoy it. And he will. Very much so. Um, so listening is like the most important thing ever. Uh, I personally believe that listening is the number one love language. Words are king. You know there's that book out, The Five Love Languages, and now people are coining like the six love languages and all this conversation going on. But I personally believe that listening is the number one love language. I believe that with all my heart. Um, and um, so how can, we, how can we love God the most? How can we bring God pleasure? Well, we listen to him. It's an act of tremendous respect to wait in silence uh, for someone to talk. Okay? Uh, if you had an appointment with a monarch, you would show up early and you would sit in silence waiting for them to come out and you would let them lead the conversation. How much more with God? Um, and so listening. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. Sanctuary, it's called. It's a place of silence because prayer is supposed to be overwhelmingly silent, listening. Overwhelmingly. Solomon talked about this when he said, when you draw near to the house of God, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Let your words be few because God is in heaven and knows everything and you are on earth knowing practically nothing by comparison. And so he said, therefore, let your words be few. Essentially what he was saying is listen. You're going there to listen. And that's why churches have been called sanctuaries for centuries. Is because they're places of silence where people go primarily to listen for the personal voice of God in faith. And that's where he does speak to them. Silent listening in faith. Um, but no one is doing this. No one is, is preaching this in any church today. It's all an entertainment fest. It's kind of a, a money racket in some ways. Sometimes it is. It's like a business. Um, Leonard Ravenhill was so strong as to say it this way. He says, if you want to see how popular a church is, go on Sunday morning. If you want to see how popular the pastor is, go to the Sunday evening service. And then he said, if you want to see how popular God is, go to the prayer meeting. And then furthermore, I would add that when you go to the prayer meeting, listen for how much silence there is at the prayer meeting. If it's all people talking and yelling at God and there's no silence, that's not meeting with God. That's, a, that's an, a noise fest that's, that's ridiculous. No one's going to receive anything from God. It's not going to be pleasurable at all. It's going to be a terrible use of a prayer time. Um, remember when Jesus chased people out of the temple, it's because they were making a ton of noise. <laughs> there was no silence in the, in the holy house of God anymore. It's called a sanctuary because it's supposed to be free from noise. And um, that's why Jesus chased them out of the temple. He says, this is supposed to be a place of prayer which is, he was saying, it's supposed to be a place of silence. Um, and so the word listen equals the word silent, using the same letters. And they both point to Father. So first and foremost, the word listen points to Father. So who are you supposed to listen to the most in life? Well, Father. That, that means you spend a lot of time in your private prayer closet listening for the voice of the Father. Um, and... Uh, but in my opinion, listening is, is the number one love language, first and foremost, between us and God. I can't say that strongly enough. Um, God wants to be listened to. And uh, we need to really hold our peace when we um, gather together in churches as Christians. It needs to be practiced, and it needs to become the norm. Um, and it certainly needs to be encouraged in people's private lives at home, because it's the most satisfying thing there is. Um, to hear the personal voice of God in silence. Um, 
but listening is the number one love language. And uh, so obviously practicing this with, with humans is, is an act of great respect. But I, I can't say enough that the word listen belongs first and foremost to Father. And that uh, listening for him in, in your private prayer closet is the most pleasurable activity uh, that you can do. Uh, we are very addicted to, to books and the tangible, uh, particularly in the West. Um, some people need to actually put away their Bibles and put away their um, literature of any sort. Certainly, you know, the Internet and any kind of media. You, you literally need to put, a, put away books and um, listen in silence for the personal voice of God. Um, okay, so the word listen. Another word that comes to mind is the word attention. You know, pay attention. Attention, of course, ends in Father, parallels Father perfectly. Um, but uh, I, I sometimes I get... It's, it's quite upsetting who people are listening to these days. Just such unintelligence, such, such unbelievable brashness and unbelievable verbiage out there. Um, really nothing worth listening to. So I would encourage you first and foremost to listen... Um, to Father God in private. That is by far the most important. And then if you do listen to humans in this life, make sure that they themselves are highly practicing the practice of listening to God because they cannot have anything really good to listen to if they themselves aren't practicing the practice of listening to Father God. It's pretty simple in my mind at this point. It's like, if you're really going to listen to a human, you should listen to a human that listens to God. Otherwise, you're listening to a follower of the devil. Jesus told us the truth. He says, if you're not, if someone is not a child of the Father, he says they're a child of the devil. Why would you listen to a child of the devil? So... Um, and, the, and God is very good. God is not a liar. He is not kooky. He is not spooky. It is not ethereal. It is not mystical, like you're going to be out in left field. God promises, if you seek me, you will find me. He says, if you wait on the Lord, you know, you will be satisfied and uh, you will hear his voice and it'll be very personal. Um, so I personally get really frustrated. Oh, to some degree. I, I've kind of got the serenity prayer going on this one, but I just see people listening to all sorts of junk that is clearly not birthed um, in, in God. And it's, it's not anything that came forth from a, a listening session for the Lord, and uh, therefore it's completely unsatisfying garbage. Um, so, who, who will listen to the Lord? I, I personally believe that listening is the number one love language. Uh, in, in the parable of Mary, in the story of Mary and Martha, Jesus really declared that to us. Because, folks, you have to think about it logically. What can you really do for God? He's all powerful. He can do anything he wants. And he has trillions of angels that do whatever he wants. Like, so the greatest commandment is to love God. You say, how can I love God in the way that pleases him the most? Well, Jesus told us in the parable of Mary and Martha, he, he, he hit this logical point home in that one simple story. Mary, uh, Martha is running around trying to do things for Jesus, trying to do things for God. Jesus is like, what are you doing? I'm all powerful. He's like, I could, I could supernaturally snap my fingers like, like I turned water into wine at the wedding. I could set the table with a snap of my fingers. I could clean the floor with a snap of my fingers. I could do everything that you're doing, Martha, with a snap of my fingers. Why are you doing this? He's saying, I am here, Martha. I am your satisfaction. I am your pleasure. I am God. I am your glory. Come and listen to me. And... God takes tremendous pleasure in a human being sitting at his feet or just lying in comfort, listening to him. Like, what can we do for God? What can we do for him? He can do it all. He's all powerful. But for some reason, God loves this concept of listening. 
like someone just sitting there in silence listening to him like and folks I, I we are all made in the image of God and I just think of myself if I am uh, you know I'm a man standing up and I'm sharing something like I am now I'm speaking things I'm speaking my thoughts I'm sharing truth that I know if there is a beautiful person even one beautiful person in the audience that is looking at me staring at me with unwavering attention total respect total awe and wonder total adoration total love I am going to feel like a trillion dollars I am going to feel so happy and so high and so respected and so in love and so like the king of the world and the man of the hour <laughs> that first of all I'm going to be massively in love with that person that is sitting in the audience looking at me and listening to me I they have my heart completely like they got my heart in the palm of their hands <laughs> and secondly I'm I'm gonna feel so just pleasure like I'm gonna feel so much pleasure on the inside of me that uh, I'm not even gonna know what to do with myself you know so words are king the spoken word is king it created the universe and so when someone listens to us um, with great care and admiration and respect it's like a trillion dollars like it's just like this person respects me this person like believes what I'm saying they are listening carefully for what I'm saying which means they respect me and you're just like it's, it's a trillion dollars in my opinion it's the highest gift that you can give to anyone and in my strong opinion it's the highest love gift that you can give to God himself I do believe that I do believe and Jesus declared that to us in the story of Mary and Martha he said Martha's running around trying to do all this stuff Mary's sitting there listening get this though I want to hit this home Mary was sitting there listening to the personal voice of Jesus she was not sitting there reading the scripture on her own tuning the personal voice of Jesus out she was not sitting there on her own reading her theology textbook together with Jesus or hoping that Jesus or God might she was there listening to the personal person of God like that that's it folks and so like we we have all sorts of education and all sorts of books these days and un, just an infinite amount of tools to learn things and acquire information but we are not taught to practice silent listening for the personal voice of God which in my opinion is the number one thing that Christians and all people you know people will come to the truth and there are Christians they, they should practice this for their lifetime okay so listening and and I I truly believe that the level to which someone is capable of um, discerning a worthy speaker and listening to them it's it's just a huge sign of maturity if if someone can listen carefully like if I know that I have the Holy Spirit and I and that I'm speaking truth to someone I really am expecting them to listen carefully and I'm actually kind of watching to see how good of a listener they are to me it's one of the biggest signs of maturity that there is just incredible uh, listening and uh, man it's it's so amazing to me like you have to look at the person with awe and respect everyone is amazing every human body is amazing like I just man we gotta fix education 
we got to fix education. And education ends in father, just like the word listen. Like we, we, anyways, um, there's not enough listening for God. It's the highest pleasure there is. And uh, God saves the best for last. That's what you'll be doing on your deathbed. So if that's the highest pleasure in spirituality, then cash in on it now. Start enjoying it now. Okay. And uh, <sighs> will you listen to me? I know I, for myself, I would probably be extremely track, extremely attracted to a woman who is an incredible listener. And she doesn't butt in. <laughs> She doesn't start taking the microphone, so to speak, and be like, oh, 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 that reminds me of my thing. Oh, 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 that reminds me of what happened to me today. Oh, oh, that reminds me of my story. Let, let me take over here. I'm like, that is immaturity. <laughs> it's like, if someone is speaking something in the Lord, and it's meaningful, and it's important, it's a huge act of attraction, like of attractiveness to just listen. Oh my gosh, there's, there's nothing more attractive than a good listening person. So, um, and I, I believe that, that God declares that with us. You say, we want, we want to please God. How will we please God? Well, listen, just listen, you know, just listen, <laughs> just listen. Okay. Um, alrighty then. Well, well, well. <laughs> listening. God's creation of listening. <laughs> it's so peaceful. Like, listening is so peaceful. Peace is the prize. Like, I marvel. Like the word prize ends in father. The word listen ends in father. You know, the word attention ends in father and all these things. And please equals father. Pleasure parallels father. It just... Um, <laughs> Alrighty then. Listen, listening is, is worship. We, we have a terrible definition of the word worship. Like we think worship is us shouting at God and singing to God. I'm like, this is terrible. No, worship is us listening to God. Like just think of if I'm a teacher standing at the front of a room and there's young, beautiful people sitting in front of me and they're looking up at me with their eyes fixed, wide open, taking notes on everything that I say or just sitting there and listening to every word that I say as if I'm the authority of all things beautiful and all things worth talking about on planet Earth. I'm going to be in paradise. I'm going to feel like a trillion dollars. I'm like, it's, it's basically worship. Listening is worship. Whoever it is that you listen to with great awe and admiration and care it's worship, man. Like when people are staring at you and listening to your words, it's basically worship. They, they are like, you know, respecting you um, as a father like figure. And uh, ay, ay, ay. so the world needs more listeners. <laughs> The world needs way more listeners. All right. So listen, listen, listen. Father gets the last word. Listen, listen, listen. Silent, silent, silent. And uh, God will bless the listeners. They will outlive the talkers.
I felt peaceful doing that. Just like a moment, a little this, a little that. It's true, just it is a pleasure to preach. And what a pleasure to just travel through the world in your mind. Just tell stories. You know. Talk about the majesty of it all. Like meditate on it until you go deep and how beautiful it all is. Like It is. It is amazing. That's why I've always struggled to like take a job that controlled my mind because you're like, now oh, my mind is locked to a grid. I can't even like fly through the universe. Yeah, so just, that was pleasurable. I'm like, just be a living voice. You don't have to be on camera. Yes, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'll just be like, start teaching people. Um, uh, that was pretty cool. I, I worked pretty hard. It's like, man, I am. It's true. Difficult person to satisfy. It takes a long time. I'm like we don't take long enough. I'm like you gotta sink your teeth into this. I'm like there's so much glory to be talked about in this. Thing. It's true. There's too much to talk about. There really is too much to talk about. I'm preaching to myself that somehow the gifts that I am given are meant to flow into other people. Somehow it seems that God has ordained pleasure and satisfaction to, to sometimes take place through people and you'll be a part of the pleasure wheel. I am also a big believer in the pleasure back and forth just between me and God. It's like, I, I actually believe that that's fine too. Okay, well, you know, shave. Pleasure. Holy pleasure. I almost feel like I should be recording videos though. So why wouldn't you record video and just share it all? It's true, I was even mad that I missed 10 minutes of listening. You should record it all. It's like stupid athletes are recording themselves. Why not record your thoughts? If, it's, if you start to feel angry doing something, that's probably because it's the Holy Ghost saying, you know, I'm probably doing this. Mm -hmm. All right, Lord. That was kind of fun. It's kind of cool. I don't think I spend much more time doing that. Well, I'll we'll just try and do what I can do today. Maybe we'll get the phone going. So even my voice. Recognize that that's a pleasurable thing to do in life. Use your voice.
class of people. Peanuts, I thought, were the perfect complement to this. Well, I have to eat these ones. So. Mm. So is tuna, man. Tuna is so awesome. And I feel like I need to actualize a lot more. It's just I don't like being still for very long. Maybe I will hit up the gym. This is what I used to eat all the time. It was flake like tuna. It was flake like tuna. I used to have milk. I used to drink food. It used to be flake like tuna, milk, and vegetables, and red peppers. I'm like, I gotta get back into the things that I love. I should just upload a video. Like maybe I'll just upload videos. That's honestly the simplest, most honest thing. Put yourself on a video camera and just talk about a given word. And just upload it. It's like, who cares? Just share your thoughts.
Alright, or maybe, I don't know, maybe I need to move on. Father, please help me go to the next level. I'm going to grow faster. Maybe I'll get this point accurate. See what we can do. Maybe God will lead me to start a church or something like that. I'm done, it's awesome. Maybe I should start a church called the Father's Church. <laughs> I would actually consider doing that. Start a church called Father's Church. I just help me to grow and take things to the next level. Maybe I'll do the YouTube channel thing. God, I'm going to take it to the next level. Whatever that is, whatever that means. I just want to go to the next level. Thank you. 
see her to church. It's humble like for her to come in. Actually, I have to work together with other people. <laughs> Start a church with like Josh and Misha Kleider. <laughs> no, I'm I'm such a purist. That's my problem. I'm like, I'm also very much a dictator. My true self is is really I'm a dictator. I love to be in control. Like the reason I typically haven't been around people is because I can't stand the fact that I don't get to be a dictator. Like I'm 